Hello, people of the internet. I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com, and today I want to talk about a pistol shooting drill that is designed to completely mess with your head. This drill comes from John Hearn. I mentioned in our last couple of videos that I recently attended a very unique shooting class called Cognitive Pistol and Tactical Anatomy that was taught by John. Here is uh, John from our last video explaining some of the why behind that class. So a lot of times when we go to shooting classes, I'm just performing a contrived drill. I know before the drill even starts exactly what I can do. I can prepare in my head exactly what I need to deliver uh, and it's much easier to access that motor program and just deliver it. In the real world, I don't know what motor program I'm going to need to deliver until the last possible moment. So unlike most shooting classes, John's focuses on pairing technical handgun skill with decision making and problem solving and stuff like that. So we ran through shooting exercises of increasing complexity that forced us to really think about what we were doing. John has rigged up a remote control system of different colored LED lights. The lights indicated when, where, and how many shots to fire. Sometimes the lights were spread out in opposite corners of the room, or they would even get moved when we weren't looking. Now, ideally, we would incorporate drills like these into our regular practice. The more we are exposed to novel stimuli while we're shooting, the better prepared we are to deal with other novel stimuli in the future. But it's not really practical for most of us to duplicate the light system that John has developed. So I asked him if he had any ideas for drills we could do on our own that might involve some mental pressure. He suggested a really interesting variation of the casino drill. If you're already familiar with the casino drill, you can skip ahead to this point in the video to hear about John's version. If you're not familiar with it, the casino drill was originally developed by Tom Gibbons, and he's got a good video about it. It's one of the few commonly taught range drills that does have that combined focus on technical skills and thinking under pressure. We also did a video on the casino drill a few years back, but uh, I'll run through the course of fire for you again. In order to shoot a proper casino drill, you need a specific target that's sold by Action Targets. It's called the Discretionary Command Training Target Version 2. There are actually three variants of that target. There's a 2A, a 2B, and a 2C. Tom Givens usually uses 2A in his classes, but you can use the other two as well. If you don't want to buy a special target just for this drill, I've got a principal alternative that I'll tell you about in a minute. It will not technically be a casino drill, but it's the same basic idea. The official target has six shapes randomly numbered one through six. The order is different depending on which variant of the target you have. The distance for this drill is five yards. Start with your pistol in the holster loaded with seven rounds only. You will also need two spare magazines loaded with seven rounds each. At the signal, draw and fire one round on shape number one, two rounds on number two, three on three, and so on until you have six rounds on six. Reload as needed. It's called the casino drill because you have 21 rounds and the par time is 21 seconds. Add a one second penalty for every missed shot or for any rounds fired out of sequence or at the wrong target. The two reloads are in there, not because emergency reloading is a super important skill for the real world. It's something that almost never comes up for private citizens. The reloads are there to mess with your head. They're there to force you to stop counting your shots and then shift your attention to the gun without forgetting which target you are shooting and how many rounds you have left to fire on it. It sounds like a simple drill, but I have seen a lot of much better shooters than myself crash and burn on this drill because they got mixed up and lost count or started shooting things in the wrong order. Before we get to John's version of the drill, let's take a look at a demo of the original casino drill. We picked a perfect day to go to the range, 92 degrees and super humid, so within a few minutes, everything was drenched in sweat. That adds a little extra challenge, especially for a smaller gun like the Sig P365 XL that I was using. Recoil control and gun manipulations are always more difficult with sweaty, slippery hands. So I maintained a careful pace throughout the drill and ended up with a clean run of 19.11 just inside the par time by a couple of seconds. But I'm already familiar with this drill and I know the pattern fairly well by now. 
uh, we needed a test subject with no prior exposure to the casino drill to give you a better idea of how it usually goes. Our camera guy, Kenneth, was volunteered for that job. He bravely agreed to shoot the casino drill for the very first time, completely cold, on camera, no warm up or anything. He started out pretty strong, except for that miss on number one. Those triangles will mess you up if you're not careful. Then when he got to the reload on number five, he had a little trouble with his mag pouch and that caused him to lose count. He put two extra shots on five and only had four rounds left for number six. So his time was 2273 plus a four second penalty for the two misses and two rounds fired out of sequence. This kind of error is super common with the casino drill. It's a great example of what can happen when you're under a heavy cognitive load. Maybe you can count your rounds and handle the reloads, but when something unexpected comes up, does that become one too many tasks for your brain to juggle? Kenneth shot the casino drill a few more times and started getting the hang of it. This run just a couple of minutes later looks completely different from his first run. He knows what's coming next. Uh, he shot this one in 1829 with two misses for a total of 2029, which is under par. And that's the downside of the casino drill or any similar exercise. Once you shoot it a few times, you start to memorize where the numbers are and when you're gonna have to reload. It stops being a mental exercise and it very quickly becomes just another technical drill. There are changes you can make to the course of fire to refresh the novelty factor. You can switch to a different version of the target. You can shoot the numbers in reverse order or you can change up the number of rounds that you have loaded in each of your magazines. But John Hearn's variant takes it one step further. I asked if he had a catchy name for it and he said, quote, not really, I just think of it as the mega suck version. Uh, I think that's actually a pretty fitting name, so we're gonna call this the Casino Drill Mega Suck Edition. For this version of the drill, in keeping with the casino theme, you will need a pair of regular six-sided gaming dice. On one die, get some tape or sticky labels or something like that, and label three sides with the word up and three sides with the word down. You will also need a table or some other flat surface in front of you at the firing line. Set up everything else just like the original casino drill. Target at five yards, three mags with seven rounds each. Before the timer goes off, roll the dice onto the table, but keep them covered with your hand. When you hear the beep, remove your hand and look at the dice. The numbered die tells you which shape to start on. The up down die tells you which direction to go. So for example, if you got five up, you would draw, fire five rounds on five, six rounds on six, then you'd go back to one round on one, two rounds on two, and so on. If you got five down, you would go the other direction. Five, four, three, two, one, and then you would end with six rounds on number six. The par time is still 21 seconds with a one second penalty for any misses. On my first attempt at the Mega Suck Edition, I rolled four up. It took me three full seconds to look at the dice, draw, get the first round on target. So that's already pretty slow. I was really conscious of trying not to make any technical errors and that caused me to move at an even more careful pace than before. Probably more careful than I needed to be based on the size of the groups I was shooting on those targets there. I ended up with a clean run, but it was a little over par at 21.94. Kenneth rolled three up on his first try. He started with a few rough shots. Again, one of those tricky triangles. The rest of the run went fairly smoothly until he got to the very end. He forgot which number he needed to end on and had a big pause there before putting those last couple of rounds on the number two circle. This really tanked his score, which was 25.35, including the three misses. We both improved on our second attempt. I had another clean run with a 21.15 and Kenneth had a 21.40 with one round out. Both still a little over par, but getting better. Just like the standard casino drill, once you do it this way a few times, the novelty starts to wear off. The, the idea is to keep exposing yourself to new problems to solve while you're shooting. Again, you can make some other changes like using another version of the target. You can load your magazines with six, seven, and eight rounds and shuffle them instead of seven rounds each. 
If you really want to be mean to yourself, John suggested randomly loading a dummy round into one of the mags. That way you can't just automatically reload when the gun stops working. You have to stop and actually diagnose and fix the problem before you can go back to shooting. I'm sure you can think of some other things to do with these targets. I like the casino drill variations because if you stick with a par time of 21 shots in 21 seconds, that gives you an objective standard to measure your performance against. If you don't wanna buy these targets, I made some printable decision drill targets you can use. The shapes on the commercial target are six by six inches, but I had to shrink them down in order to get two on a regular sheet of printer paper. I also changed the numbers to Roman numerals just because I'm a huge jerk. If you print out all three pages of the PDF, you will have all the shapes you need for a casino drill. The shapes are 40% smaller, so you can also reduce the distance to the target by 40%. That'll put you at three yards instead of five yards. It's not gonna be quite the same. The shapes are too close together. They're not in color. You're not at the right distance. But you do have the benefit of being able to shuffle the pages around or even change their orientation to keep things interesting. I hope you guys found this helpful. Try out some of these drill variations and let us know how it goes. I will leave you with one more tip to uh, make your life better. If you ever use speakerphone in a public place, don't from everyone else, please, please stop doing that. Instead, use your phone to quickly and quietly order some ammo from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.